Okay. So uh, I made a game with Godot. Uh, I'm using uh, a gaming laptop with NVIDIA hardware and uh, Ubuntu Linux. I have a history with computer science, formally. I've taken lots of computer science courses. I have a background interest in AI and la large language models, but everybody is doing large language models now. And it's impossible to get really good access to a large language model. Uh, so I had to move away from AI. I was attracted to gaming and YouTube videos. Gaming with Godot uses NVIDIA hardware, as does editing with something like DaVinci Resolve. Uh, this is the reason for this video. This is uh, at the intersection of gaming and video editing. The game is essentially a maze game. Originally, I wanted a single hill that the player sat on, and at some point in the game, the ground opened up all over the hill, revealing a maze. Everywhere the maze went, the hill was meant to disappear. This is not what I ended up with. Uh, in the game now, the player starts on a hill, and when a special object on the hill is contacted by the player, you know, contact, uh, an opening to the maze appears below the player. Um, there is just this one opening to the maze. Uh, every low level is composed of two parts, a maze below and a hill on top. Uh, the maze and hill are both procedurally generated. Uh, both the hill and the maze use the 3D grid map feature in Godot. Uh, the hill uses fast noise. There are lots of YouTube videos online that describe how to use fast noise. Basically, Godot implements a class for using this in your projects. The only departure from a direct implementation of fast noise in my game is that the various levels of altitude in the hills incline are represented by 5x5 five five mesh groups. This way the uh, incline is more gradual and the hill itself is bigger. The maze uses something called A star or A star, A with capital letter A with an asterisk. The implementation of the maze is not standard uh, usage of A star. Uh, a description of how A star is used in the game follows. The description is long, uh, but here goes. An area is defined for the maze. It is a grid. In the area grid relationship uh, in the area, a grid relationship is made up to connect each of the adjacent uh, grid elements. Uh, at that time, a group of points is chosen to randomly represent intersections or endpoints in the final maze. Uh, one at a time, uh, the points are connected, and the A star function produces sets of grid. Uh, components that connect each pair of random points. Uh, then, as each connected path is identified, it is recorded as part of the final maze. Finally, the points in the grid structure are disabled for the, the future use of A star. So, the, the path is defined by A star, it's recorded, and then those dots that made up the path are disabled. The A star class goes on to try to connect all the points. Ultimately, connecting these stops at the size of the grid. Uh, ultimately, connecting these stops as the size of the grid and the previously recorded paths get in the way. Finally, all the intersections are tried between all the random intersection points when what remains is a procedurally generated maze the mazes can be very complicated. Uh, I wanted it to work out so that the hole in the hill would drop you into the maze. What happens is the hole drops you to a spot that is very close to being in the maze. Sometimes the hole puts you directly in the maze but frequently the hole puts you very close to the maze, but not in it. Uh, this should 
there should be a way to fix this but so far I have been unable the game is still playable uh, all the elements described so far are defined in a JSON file so that the maze and the hill can be created with varying levels of complexity with every gameplay. There are also several moving objects that are made in Blender. Using Blender is beyond the scope of this document. Blender is used to make the bricks or meshes that everything in the grid map is made of. Blender is also used to make the objects in the game that are used like goals or prizes. Uh, there are the meshes noted above. There's an object called an altar. Uh, that object changes gameplay when it is contact when it's contact or touched. Uh, there are also a whole category of objects that are like the altars but that include a floating object on top of them. These floating objects look like skeleton keys. For this reason, they are called keys. Again, these objects change uh, gameplay when they're touched. Uh, in, the maze, in the mazes, there's a walled structure called a prison. The idea here is to have an object that is a component in a maze that is predefined and still works with the A-star algorithm noted above. The prison has special mesh blocks that define its boundaries. I may put the prison room to some special use at some point in the future, but for now it's just an element in the maze. I also decorate the maze and the hill uh, with, Godot, with a Godot particle system. The particle emitter is used to punctuate when a specific item is touched or acquired. For the future, I'd like to add some kind of monster that looks for, uh, like a 3D alligator. I wrote a 2D platformer years ago for the Android phone. In that platformer, the villain is an evil robot alligator. If I could revive that idea, I think that would be great. And that's about it.